the kapaka tree showered colorful flowers on the vase. The heavenly instruments poured out hymns of joy. Why? The main veins of Pungajali became the veins of Yaha and played the song of Deva. The kind words of the prince gave her such an intoxicating effect. Prince! I am not a heavenly maiden, a poor runaway girl. It is not heavenly elixir that you drink. It is the elixir found in the Kulagar temple. She said. If you are not a heavenly maiden, will I believe you? Are you not Varanas Tiraputalvi? Ocean girl! How many times have you given me life? What am I going to exchange for you? said the prince. Sir! Let this poor man stay with them for one more day and one more night, said Punguzali. How can that be? I must leave for old era immediately, said the prince. No, word has come to take them to Nagapatanam. From who? It's from young Brady. Who is that there, the other one? The one pulling the boat with Vandiyadeva. My uncle is Santhan Amuthan. Ilayabiridi has sent a message to him to take them to Sudamani Viharam in Nagipatanam. Ah! Has my mother's mind changed? Has my desire to be crowned gone? I have long desired to join the Buddhist Sangha. I will join the Buddhist Sangha and become a bhikkhu. I will go on pilgrimage to far-off lands, Savagam, Kataram, Maritingam, Mapapalam, China. Oh my fortune! Bliss, flower girl! Come on, let's go! Saying that, the prince stood up. Punguzali suspected that he was not fully conscious yet and was talking in his breath. At the same time, a voice was heard in the distance. The prince stopped, startled, and said, Pungujali. What is that? said. The owl hoots, sir. She said. No. It's a human voice. The voice of someone in great danger. Let's save him. Let's do a good deed before joining the Buddha Sangha. After saying this, the prince jumped and tried to run. He suddenly fell down in the attempt. Pungazali supported him. Both the boatmen came running. They gently carried the prince, who had lost consciousness again, and laid him safely in the boat. The boat started going in the canal. Except for the prince, the other three were cramped in it. Vandiyathevan said, Pungazali. This boat is difficult to carry four people. Anyway, I have to say goodbye to you. I will disembark here. It is your responsibility to take the prince safely. I don't need to tell you much. He said that. His voice was hoarse. As the moonlight fell on his face, his eyes sparkled with pearls. Could we go down after crossing the Kodakar forest? I keep my horse there too. Don't you remember the sign? Sentine Muthan said. No. I will get down here. I will lie down and sleep for a while in the Kulagar Temple Prakaram and get up before dawn. Otherwise I will not be able to travel tomorrow. No matter how many obstacles there are on the way. Vandiyathevan said. Pungazali took out the bag that she had kept in her lap all the time and gave it to him. Inda. Kulagar Temple Offering. Eat this and sleep. She said. You haven't eaten anything either, have you? There are so many villages if we go down the canal from Kadakare. Let me or Sendan go and earn food. That's not the case with you. Shouldn't you go and join the old people without being seen by anyone? And you must not forget that the prince is in the boat. Who will believe that the man in this boat is a prince? Don't worry about it. It's our responsibility. No one will notice this whole boat. Okay, so I'll get off here. Then the voice was heard again. Ah! What is that? Asked the prince and lost consciousness again. Pungujali stood up. I can't, I can't, and the prince won't forgive me if he finds out. Stay in the boat a little while longer. I'll take the wizard out of the mud and leave. The place is close from here. Saying that, she jumped from the boat to the bank of the canal. Then I will also come with you. I will not leave you alone with that enemy, said Santhanamuthan. 
No, Amuta. You stay in the boat. Take care of the prince. I'm going with the flower girl. I have business to see the wizard too. After saying that, Van Dye the van ran fast after Pungazali. In front of Pungazali's mind's eye, the magician's bust was buried in the mud, and the foxes were standing around him and watching him snatch and eat him. Meanwhile, the prince looked at her and said, Girl, you are a murderer. The scene that accuses appeared. These scenes made her legs quick. She quickly approached the mud pit that buried the wizard. She was very disappointed not to see the magician there. Van Dye the Van, who came next, approached her and asked her why she was hesitating. Maybe another mud hole. There are many holes in Kadakere, aren't there? You must have forgotten. He said. Pungazali pointed to the top piece of Synthan Amuth and tied at one end to the bush. Pity. She could not speak. Do you think he would have sunk in the mud? No, no. Can Ravi Dasan be killed like that? He would have had a hundred lives? He would have escaped. Saying that, Van Dyathevan untied the piece tied to the bush and took it. Apart from saying that as a consolation to Punghuli, he thought in his mind, Ravi Dasan Mandal would have gone, he deserves this horrible death. The thought appeared. Both of them realized together that it was useless to stand there any longer. They walked back to the canal. There were trees covering the banks of the canal on both sides. Two figures were seen peering out, holding a branch of a tree. One of them is a male figure, another female figure. There. Punguzali pointed out. Yes, do you know who they are? The witch is one. The other is my brother's wife. She has come before me and freed the witch. It went well. Nothing good. Are they staring at the boat coming down the canal? Just then one of the two figures turned and looked in the direction they were coming from. Immediately the two figures and the bushes disappeared beneath. Yay! They've seen us too. Come with me without talking. I'm making a trick. Don't be surprised by anything I say. Talk right next to me. Van Dye the van said. Both approached the place where the aforementioned figures stood. They crossed the place and went a little further and sat down by the side of the canal. Van Diadeva made sure that those who were hiding behind in the bushes would hear their speech well. Van Dye the van said, Pungujali. Look here. Why are you worried? The magician is dead and gone. Gone is the glory. Alas! What a horrible death! said Punghuali. Having committed murder, what pity is this? Oh! Did I kill you? Then who made him fall into the mud? You? Suddenly you felt compassion. You came to escape. By then the mud had swallowed him. Did you come to escape, or did you come to see if he was dead? Who saw? Who asked you to follow me? You only came to know about the murder you committed? Adi murder Badagi. Nana is murderous. Yes, you're a murderer. Am I the only one who says I'm a yogi? I'm not. I drowned the prince in the sea. You killed the wizard in the mud. That and this went right. If you didn't tell anyone about the murder I did, I didn't tell anyone about the murder you did. Are you the one who killed the prince? You said you never saw him before. I said that on purpose. There is no need to tell you that any more. Do you agree with what I said or not? If you say no, I will immediately go to Nandini Devi and tell her that you killed the witch in the mud. There is no evidence of my murder, there is evidence of your murder. What will Nandini do to me? She will do nothing else. She will bury you up to your neck in the earth and make you stumble under the foot of an elephant. Oh! What horror! If not, agree to do as I say. What to do? That's what your uncle is bringing, get on that boat. Both of you must go straight to Ceylon. Go there and weep for your prince. Why should I go to Sri Lanka? What do you want if I stay here? Ah! If you go and tell the Avenger about me. He has an admiration for the prince no matter what. 
he will seek to avenge me, I have little more to do in this world. You sinner! Why did you kill the prince? At least tell me. So what? Well, I tell you. The prince and his companions conspired to take away the kingdom of Adidakari Kalar. Adidakari Kalar is my master. His enemy is my enemy. That's why I killed the prince. Do you know? You will be punished for this Mahabhaveda. Don't worry about it. You're going to do as I say, aren't you? If not, what is the other way? There the boat is coming, I will go and get on it. Look here. Listen carefully. When you board the boat, you must go straight towards the sea. If you turn towards Kadakar, that is your fate. I will watch your boat from here. I will move from here only after the boat reaches the sea. All right, all right. Stay here. Let a hundred jackals snatch you and eat you. Seeing the signal given by Vandiyathevan, Pungazali hurried away from there and boarded the boat. The boat went up. Vandiyathevan was sitting there as he told her. Half an hour passed. The boat went far down the canal and disappeared. Suddenly, behind Vandiyathevan, there was a terrible laugh, ha ha ha. Vandiyadeva pretended to be startled and suddenly stood up and looked. The wizard stood up among the bushes and laughed horribly like a ghost. Vandiyathevan ran from there screaming oh! Devil!